They say once you start drinking alone, you're an alcoholic. I'm really trying to avoid that. He might lose his foot. Right when he got it in the door. I told him to be himself. That was pretty mean, I guess. <laughs> Roger Sterling just honestly had the best one-liners in this show. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Roger Sterling is a suave, suave. executive at the Madison Avenue ad agency Sterling Cooper. He drinks more martinis than I probably do water, does more womanizing than perhaps a married man should but also encapsulates the wealth, power, and hubris of the American post-war upper class. Ah, uh, that's where you've been. In the very first episode of In The Drink, I talked a bit about how Donald Draper symbolizes a man out of time who struggles to come to terms with a counterculture mindset and modern gender relations as the 1960s comes to a close. Roger Sterling also represents this kind of man to an extent, but in a slightly different way that's really important to Mad Men's overall message. Mad Men as a whole is really about America's social intergenerational relations of the 1960s, as the Cold War and post-war affluence really disillusioned most of the coming-of-age baby boomers at the time. Roger, in this respect, represents the paradigm of the older generation getting pushed out in favour of the younger, more ambitious. Roger begins to question his place in Sterling Cooper more and more. In fact, he didn't even earn the job himself. Sterling Cooper was founded by his father and Burt Cooper. He was merely handed the position when he came of age. The symbolism of Roger's defunct status includes his grey hair, his grey suits, his black and white office, really encapsulating this idea of, well, like Donald Draper, a man out of time, really. Well, you know how they are, maybe it'll kill itself. Roger's drink of choice, either an imported gin or vodka, which when out of the office is usually mixed into a martini. You ready for another? really symbolizes his wealth, which has culminated into very expensive tastes. This contrasts heavily against Donald Draper, who, like Rogers, a man out of time, but prefers a rye, an inexpensive liquor produced in America, which reflects his impoverished and countryside upbringing. However, we are here, as always, to talk about cocktails. Roger, when drinking a cocktail, is usually having a Gibson martini, very similar to a martini, uh, apart from two rather noticeable differences. The first one being the presence of a pearl onion in the bottom of the glass, apart from either an olive or a twist of lemon peel. The second difference being uh, there's no orange bitters in this. Uh, the only mixed ingredients are the gin and the vermouth. In fact, the Gibson Martini has been becoming increasingly prevalent in popular culture, most notably and recently in the Queen's Gambit. Side of martini, Gibson. I find the onion slightly more refined than the olive. I believe this drink shows up quite a few times in that show, actually. I haven't seen it yet, but uh, it's been recommended to me like a billion, million times already. In fact, it was hilarious after that show came out, after like a, about a couple weeks after that show became really, really popular, all of my friends suddenly started asking me if I wanted to go around and play chess. But I just find it really funny how when this show came out, there was just an enormous outburst of chess popularity uh, for like a month, which then quickly evaporated. All right, but we are here to drink a cocktail. It is hot in here. Roger Sterling certainly wouldn't wait any longer than I have. It's the first drink of the day. I'm thirsty. Let's go. Uh, this is going to be a stirred drink, so we will need our stirring vessel. And the first thing we are going to need is two ounces of gin. Now, I'm going to go for a tank ray here because it's a tiny bit more proofy than the beef eater I've got here. I also think it'd be something that Roger Sterling would be slightly more likely to drink. Now, um... I think a lot of people might expect me to go with a vodka here because we always see Roger drinking a vodka in the office. And I believe in the episode when they go to the speakeasy when they're absolutely wasted, um, he does order a Gibson made with a specific brand of vodka. Canadian Club Neat, Wolf Schmidt Gibson, Grandad Rocks. But I did actually make quite a dry vodka martini recently with my Iron Man martini uh, recipe. Um, and this would just basically way too similar to warrant doing at this point. And I can imagine that Roger Sterling probably likes a gin martini. Um, every bit he does a vodka one, so we're going for two ounces of London Dry Gin. Now, to my knowledge, most stirred drinks usually will add up to roughly about three ounces, and a martini does as well. Usually you'll see a martini made with two parts gin to one part vermouth. Now, weirdly enough, when researching this drink, most of the recipes that I could find were 
actually with two parts of gin to half a part of vermouth, which one gives you two and a half ounces total liquid, um, but that's what most of them do, so who am I to judge? I'm gonna use this martini vermouth. Usually I go for something, uh, usually I go for something like a Dolan. I actually cannot get that here at the moment. This is the only brand of vermouth that I can possibly get my hands on with the shops around me at the moment. I could order one online, but it just wouldn't be worth it. And for all the fact this gets, it's actually fine vermouth. There's nothing wrong with martini at all. It's quite nice. So half an ounce of a dry vermouth. Now, as mentioned previously, normally I would put a couple dashes of orange bitters in here, but there is none in the Gibson. So we're just gonna add ice to this and we're gonna stir it up. I love Mad Men for that. Just the aesthetic of the, I don't know, the New York skyscrapers in the 1960s. It just has a certain aesthetic and coziness to it. I love it so much. Uh, so what we're going to need is a coop. I've been chilling mine in the freezer. I've got a freezer here now. It's great. It makes my life just a billion times easier. Um, I've got my lovely chilled coop here. And I'm going to take a strainer to my mixing glass and we're going to strain this in. I think only a two and a half ounce total cocktail is right cool here because this comes right up to the top here. Um, it's quite a small coop, but I think it's perfect. Uh, you got to imagine Roger Sterling. He's drinking Gibson martinis. He's going to lunch and having like five of them. Uh, so probably the smaller the vessel, the better at this point. Well, I should be on my way. I'll take this for the road. Then I'm going to garnish this with the ever so iconic pickled onion. Uh, and there we go, a Gibson martini. First drink of the day, because uh, for all the cocktails I've got to film today, which of the subjects is going to be more likely to drink at this time? It's going to be Roger Sterling. Cheers. It's so refreshing. And um, that little bit of bite that you get from the tiny, tiny bit of um, acidity brought on by the, uh, by the pickled onion is lovely. It's just a nice little mm, in the back there. Lovely. And of course, gin, Tanqueray, bloody good gin. I'm getting loads of the botanicals there. Um, that's lovely. Really, really floral. Um, very dry drink. And of course, the vermouth brings its own characters of floral, botanical, you know, stuff. And, uh, and uh, that's why martini's always gonna work. Uh, the botanicals in the vermouth, the botanicals in, uh, in the gin. Perfect. And the only uh, way which I think can improve this would actually be some orange bitters. So we could bring out some of the dried citrus peels which are used to infuse uh, gin in fact now this is a bit sacrilegious but i'm gonna do it just to see if uh, if it really does make a difference i'm just gonna put one dash in here yeah no no it, it definitely does yeah it rounds out a bit more some of the sharpness brought on by the vermouth is rounded out quite a bit actually by this and you yeah you get the faintest ghostliness of the um of the dried citrus in the gin now yeah that's lovely that's great of course not a proper gibson with the bitters in it but um uh, my show my bar i'm gonna do what i want you can't stop me i made it properly uh, initially so all right guys and that'll do it for this week uh i've been joe this has been in the drink as always i've had a bloody brilliant time bringing the show to you I love making the show, it's great. And I love drinking the drinks on it as well. I really hope you guys have had a good time watching it. If there was something you liked or maybe even something you thought I could improve, uh, leave a comment. It's always good to know this stuff. Really, really handy stuff to know. Please consider liking the video and subscribing. I'm trying to improve the production quality of these videos all the time, um, even with the limited equipment and help that I have now. Uh, and I will see you in next week's episode. Cheers. <laughs>